everyone. We're going to get started. So thank you for joining us tonight. We're happy to have you here. Um, we have a very special guest. So this is the meeting on occupational therapy. Um, and just a couple housekeeping things. Uh, my name is Laurel Richardson, and I'm the director of community outreach with the Sharko Marine Tooth Association. And Elizabeth and I um, put on monthly education meetings on behalf of the CMTA. And to this month's meeting is not on occupational therapy, as you all know. Um, again, we're thrilled to have you here. So a couple bits of housekeeping. We are gonna keep everyone muted except for the speakers um, because we wanna be able to hear Valerie's presentation and make sure that everyone can hear Valerie's presentation. So thank you so much for muting yourselves. And we ask that um, we are gonna do the presentation first and then we are going to take questions, but we really, because we have so many people coming on, we had over 938 people register. So um, we won't have that many people who actually show up. They'll um, might wait and watch the recording, but we really need the questions to come in through the chat feature. Some of you have sent them to me in advance of the meeting. Um, so we will do our best to get through Valerie's presentation, which pr probably answer a lot of your questions. And then we'll ask you to put um, your questions in chat and Elizabeth and I will take turns feeding those questions to Valerie. We are gonna stop after an hour out of respect for Valerie's time. She just got home from work and everybody else's time. If your question wasn't answered, um, we will take them from chat and we will get them answered. I can send you an email or you're welcome to email me. Everyone should have my email address because I sent out the reminders. So without further ado, I'm going to interview, I mean, introduce Elizabeth Ouellette. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you, Laurel. This is great. This is great to see so many people. I want to thank everyone for joining tonight. And um, I'm with the Charcot Marie Tooth Association, been involved for about 20 years since my son was diagnosed with CMT. And I could go on and on, but I won't. Tonight's not about me. It's about Valerie and her expertise. I, uh, Al, uh, Valerie is on our CMTA advisory board. She's an expert in OT and she's dedicated her life to people with neurological impairments. And uh, where's that book? Oh, she helped co-author this book, The Guide to uh, Physical and Occupational Therapy. And this can be found, maybe Laura, you can um, do a link, uh, write a link in the message, but in the message box, but this is available on the CMT website. And uh, so I just, uh, Valerie works at the, uh, at Vanderbilt University and she worked alongside Dr. Lee for a long time. Dr. Lee, uh, June Lee is now in Michigan and uh, Valerie is still in Tennessee and I'm so happy to have her here tonight. Thank you so much for joining us and we're really excited to hear your presentation. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. I'm gonna share my screen. So yeah, Valerie has a presentation and then we'll take questions after as Laurel said. Okay, so I'll just tell everybody a little bit about myself, um, a little bit more than Elizabeth already told you. I have been an OT for um, 21, going on 22 years. Um, my entire career, I've only treated patients with neurological impairments. And when I came to Vanderbilt in 2008, I got hooked up with uh, Dr. Lee and started trying to help him um, treat his CMT patients. So that's kind of where my history with CMT patients started was around 2008. Um, and I see them as they need me um, and continue to do so, even though Dr. Lee is unfortunately no longer with me. So, um, okay, I'm going to move on. So, for those of you who don't know what occupational therapy is, we help individuals recovering from illness or disabilities. We want to, our, our main goal is to help you fully participate in all of your activities as much and independently as possible. We also train and educate individuals and family members to help patients use yeah. adaptive equipment and sometimes maybe even just some different techniques to improve your function and your level of independence. And then we also help you develop strengthening and coordination programs and assist your family members or caregivers um, effectively support you. A lot of 
confusion happens in people understanding the difference between OT and PT. So I thought it would be nice to share a comparison slide. So um, occupational therapists are going to work on self-care skills, which is your ability to take care of yourself. So getting dressed, taking a shower, tying your shoes, um, also cooking, cleaning, laundry, things like that. We also work on modifications as it relates to work and school and driving. And then we would focus on arm and hand impairment. Whereas physical therapists are going to work more on walking and assistive devices to help you walk safely. They work on balance, stairs. Then they also might assist the physician or the um, uh, prosthetist in deciding, or orthotist deciding what kind of AFO you might need. And then they're also, they would address your leg and feet impairments as opposed to OTs who work mostly on hand and arm impairments. So I just came up with a, random list of examples of things that you might have difficulty with if you have difficulty with using your hands as a result of your CMT. So button shoelaces, tying a tie, holding utensils, cutting your fingernails, putting on socks, jewelry fasteners. There are probably a million things we could add to this list. I just um, came up with a, a random list of things that I know that the patients that I have seen have come to me for help. So here are some gadgets and tools that we might uh, advise you to use if you were having these difficulties. So I don't know if I can, can you see this moving around on the screen? Yes. Okay. So this is foam tubing. It comes in many different shapes and sizes. The bezels are different sizes in the center, depending on what you might want to use it for. This is just going to make whatever utensil you use larger so that you don't need as much strength to hold on to it. So this is very um, a common thing that we would uh, prescribe that's cheap, easy. It doesn't take a lot of um, knowledge to be able to use. This is a sock aid. I wish I, I couldn't find a good video of a sock aid in use, but basically this, you put your sock on this device and then drop it down to the floor and you pull on these strings and your sock goes onto your foot without you having to actually use your fingers and your hands to put the sock on. It's also beneficial if you have balance issues and you can't get down to your feet, um, you can use something like this to, um, to reach your feet. This is a, what a, everyone probably has seen one of these before. This is just a reacher. This is something else you might use to help you get dressed. If you can't safely reach to the floor and pull up your pants, you can use this to get your pants on. You can also use it to pick things up if you drop something on the floor and, you, and your balance is impaired and you can't get down there to the floor. This is a zipper pull. So this would be used if you grab hold of this um, hook on the end, you would loop that into your zipper and then you can use the force of your whole hand and your forearm to pull up your zipper as opposed to having to have the finger strength to pull up your zipper. And then the next piece of equipment. This is an adaptive fingernail. These are adaptive fingernail clippers. The reason that these might be beneficial is you can, this is suction cups will suction down to your table or um, mm. wherever your bathroom counter, wherever you might be wanting to clip your fingernails. And that keeps it stable enough that you could put your finger in here and then use your forearm strength to actually push the device down to clip your fingernail. So you don't have to have finger strength in order to be able to clip your own fingernails. And I have another slide. Um, so these are just some more examples for self-care. I don't, I don't wear ties. So if someone comes to me and is having difficulty with tying a tie, I am not too great at helping you learn to do it. But if you know how to do it, or you have a family member that can help you, my advice is always Get all the ties that you know you're going to want to wear. Have somebody help you get them ready and loose. And then you can put them, um, you can have them hanging in the closet ready to go. And all you have to do is tighten it up. These are, um, I'm, my, I've lost the word, long handled <laughs> combs and brushes. Um, these are helpful if you um, if you have weakness in your shoulders and it's hard for you to hold up a comb or a brush long enough to comb your hair. This is just another example. If I can go back a slide, oops. So uh, we talked about the foam tubing. This would be another uh, adaptation that we could use for your utensils. 
just to keep it onto your hand and it would be the same benefit. It's just not as bulky. This is one of my favorite things. There's a company called grommet.com and I can put that in the chat box mm -hmm. at the end. They provide adaptive jewelry um, equipment or devices. So these are magnetic. And what you would have to do is get a family member or a friend to attach the ne your necklace or your bracelet or your anklet or whatever it is you wanted to wear to each side. So one hook would go here, one hook would go here. And now you have a magnet that connects your necklace and you don't have to use your fingers and your coordination that they would just automatically and then they come apart really easily when you're ready to take your, your jewelry off and then one more slide for self-care this is a button hook if anybody's ever been um to physical to occupational therapy this is one of our favorite pieces of equipment it it's used to button pretty much any size button and makes it much much easier to button your buttons I'm gonna go over here to shoelaces. These are two different types of shoelaces. If you have difficulty tying your shoes or difficulty reaching your feet to, to tie your shoes, these are two different options to replace your laces. If you don't wanna wear Velcro shoes or slip-on shoes and you really want laces in your shoes, these are two really good options. And um, again, you might have to have a family member or your therapist set these up for you, but then once they're set up, they're there and you don't, you know, they don't take much maintenance. This device here is um, called the original AFO assist and it's made by the right stuff company. And this is a device that helps you get your AFOs on and off. If you have difficulty with getting them on, this is a wonderful device that can hold the AFO still. You just slide your foot into it and then you can do your straps. Um, so I can also share the website for that. I'm not sure that I've put that at the end. Um, you guys remind me later and I can see the website. And then I don't know if any of you have trouble squeezing your toothpaste, but they make all kinds of devices to put onto your toothpaste to um, help you. It requires less strength to get your toothpaste out of your dispenser. They also make automatic dispensers, which are really nice. They're battery powered and, and can be very useful as well. Okay, so another thing that OTs really focus on is safety in the bathroom. Um, I just looked up an article that was written in January of 2018, and uh, this, uh, the author surveyed 252 people living with CMT, and 86% of them reported frequent falls or near falls. And we know by all lots of other research that falls are more likely to occur in your home and many, many falls occur, occur in your bathroom. There was a study in 2014 that found you're two times more likely to get injured if you fall in your bathroom. So being safe in the bathroom is super, super important. So we're gonna talk about some things you might use to help you be safer in the bathroom. This is a high toilet hygiene aid. This helps you reach yourself. If you've had a bowel movement and you have difficulty holding the toilet paper or anything like that, this can be very helpful in decreasing the, the difficulty you have. You can also use those flushable wipes. This device will hold a flushable wipe and requires less time. Another thing that we often recommend is a bidet. These are, um, if you can, this is a, one that's just been installed onto a regular toilet. You don't have to buy a $700 bidet. You can buy a $50 or $75 ad adaptable bidet and they're quite simple to install. My father has a bidet on all of the toilets in his home now that I've told him this was possible. And then these are just elevated. This is an elevated toilet seat that has safety rails around it to help you get up and down. It also elevates the seat so you don't have to have as much um, balance or leg strength to get up from the toilet. And then you probably all recognize this as the bedside commode. You can put this over your toilet, but if you have issues getting and have to get up a lot at night and you're, um, you can't get your AFOs on and it's difficult to walk to your bathroom at night, considering something like this just to use during the night so that you're not risking having a fall trying to get to the bathroom at night. And then you can put it away during the daytime when you don't need it. Um, a lot of people fight this and we, tip, we see a lot of people who fall in the night trying to get to the bathroom. So this is where it's 
if you're having issues at night, this is certainly something you could use. Okay. Now we're going to talk about see. We're going to talk about showering. There's lots of different types of equipment that you could put into your shower. If you like to get into the bottom of the tub and you have trouble getting out, those are much more challenging problems to solve. They do make, I'm sure you all have seen the commercials where they make the tubs that come open that you can just walk into, but that requires your tub to be replaced. So if that's something that you wanna do, then um, an OT can't really help you with that. Um, we might suggest that you put a mat in the bottom of your tub so that you don't slide, but this is a, a called a transfer tub bench. And this allows you to sit down on the outside of the tub and then you just scoot over and you don't have to step in and out of the tub. If you have balance issues or your legs are weak, it uh, help, will help you get in and out of the tub. These are long handled sponges. So if you're sitting on something like this, you can use one of these to reach your feet and get your toes and your feet nice and clean. You can also use it to clean your back. And then I put this middle slide on here because it has two great things. It has a transverse, a, a bench here that's very similar to this. It's just a little bit of lower and it doesn't have the legs. So it's a little less, it takes up less space. So if you have a space issue in your bathroom, this might be a, a better thing to consider. And then this is just a different adaptation for the toilet as opposed to the other two that I showed you. This basically gives you something to push up from, but it doesn't elevate the toilet seat. And then we almost always recommend that you install a handheld shower, especially if you're gonna be sitting to shower, you're gonna definitely need something like this so that the shower is just not spraying you in the face. And one of the easiest things you can do to prevent falls in the bathroom or in the shower is to put down a rubber mat to keep the, the floor nice and sturdy. Okay. We're gonna move on now to one of the other things OTs might help you with, and that's home life and working or school um, if, you, if you have CMT. So again, I've just come up with a list of things that my patients have told me that they have trouble with. So typing, handwriting, sitting for prolonged periods of time at a desk, using keys, opening doors, and then just general cooking and cleaning. And also lamp switches, things like that, that those little tiny switches that are, um, can be difficult to navigate. So, so much here, this is so exciting. Okay, so I don't know if any of you have ever seen the uh, ba battery powered can opener. These can be bought pretty much anywhere nowadays, but I, you know, Amazon, you can get one fairly cheap. You set this down on top of the can, you push this little button, it rotates around the can and voila, your can is open. So if you have difficulty negotiating a can opener, this can be a great solution. This is an adaptive key ring. So if you have difficulty grabbing hold of those little tiny keys that you have to use to unlock your door, they make multiple kinds of adaptive key rings. This is just one of my favorites because you can easily snap your key into there. Then this attaches to your key ring, the little hole here, and you can have five of these on the same key ring for all of your different keys and you can get different colors. It also can allow you to use the bigger muscles in your hand as opposed to having to have that fine strength in your thumb and your index finger. Then we have a adaptive pill opener. So this just helps you grip the top of the pill bottle. If you don't have any small children at home, I would suggest just having your pharmacist put on um, non-childproof lids to your medicine bottles. But if you have children at home or you're concerned about someone else getting into your medication and you need the safety locks, something like this can be very helpful to be able to get into your medicine bottles easier. And then this is a jar opener. Many of our patients complain about not being able to get jars open with their when they have weak hands. So getting something to help you with that is um, can be very beneficial instead of having to have wait for somebody to come home to open the pickle jar. So this can be mounted on the underneath side of your countertop. And as you can see, this B allows for various types or various sizes of jars. So you can go from anywhere from like um, a water bottle to a large mayonnaise jar. They also make a handheld one that looks exactly like this. You just hold it in your hand. 
This is an adaptive door opener. So if you have difficulty gripping doorknobs, they make these for all sizes of doorknobs. And we'll talk a little bit more about this, but this is just a utility cart to help you move things from um, one room of the house to the next. I'm gonna go through these pretty quickly. Um, so if you have difficulty grasping a knife to cut, this is called an easy grip carving knife. And this is called a um, rocker, rocker knife. And they can be, this rocks back and forth. You don't have, have to have any force to use this knife. The rocking motion is what cuts the food. So all you have to do is this. You don't have to have the strength to move the knife. This is very similar. All you have to do is be able to move it back and forth and it will do the cutting for you. It requires very little force. These are all the sizes that Dyson comes in. This is non-skid stuff. So this is something you would put in your hand to help you hold on to whatever it is you're trying to open or pull. Or um, we, we recommend this a lot. You can also buy this in, um, smaller sheets and it's a little less expensive. And then this is an adaptive cutting board. This is something that we recommend for people who maybe have a little less function in one hand than the other, because they can, you, you can see these little nails on the cutting board. You can put Ooh. your vegetables down on those nails and then the cutting board will hold the vegetable still for you while you're doing your cutting. <laughs> and then when it comes to typing, Sometimes the easiest solution is just to get a key guard so that you aren't accidentally hitting two keys at once and that can solve the problem. I love these keyboards because the, the colors help and these keys are much larger. So you can be a little bit more successful with not making mistakes when you're trying to type. These are adaptive pencils. I, it has other utensils on here, but this kind of grip I've really only ever put on a pencil, but it can reduce the amount of strength you need to hold your pencil. And it can also, you know, so that just helps you be able to write for longer periods of time without fatiguing and sometimes can help, excuse me, with the legibility. It makes so many different types of adaptive writing things. So if you're really having trouble with handwriting, I would just suggest trying to get in, uh, get in to see an occupational therapist. And then this is something that we use, a, we recommend a whole, whole bunch for people who have, um, if you have like a bedside lamp and you have trouble turning the knob or even those little strings sometimes can be difficult to pull, you can attach this switch to the plug of the lamp and then this becomes how you turn the lamp on and off. All you have to do is push the switch, the lamp turns on, push the switch again, the lamp turns off. And you can attach these to any kind of small appliance to eliminate having to turn an on and off switch. Okay, so I'm gonna talk just a couple of minutes about splinting because occupational therapists specialize in splinting. If you need splints for your hands and your physician is not comfortable recommending what you need, you should see an OT. They can absolutely help you figure out what you might need for your hands. And I'm just gonna go through the most common ones that we recommend for CMT. There's so many. Um, I'm just gonna try to blow through the ones that are the most commonly used. So this is a thumb spica splint. This is an off the shelf, meaning you, would, you could purchase this on Amazon. This is a custom thumb spica splint, meaning a therapist custom molded this to your hand, but it does the same thing. It prevents um, deformity and it helps excuse me, it helps support your thumb joint if you have a weak thumb. So this can provide you with enough support that you have less pain or you can coordinate your thumb with your fingers better. It's a really good tool if you're just having weakness in your thumbs. This is a dorsal blocking splint. This would be used if you're getting that intrinsic weakness. So all of these muscles in your hand are kind of atrophying and you're getting this kind of thing going on where your fingers pull back. This splint would block that from happening, but still enable you to use your fingers. So it prevents the hyperextension, but still allows function of your hand. So we would, we might make something like this if you were starting to get that hyperextension that you can't control, because we want to prevent a, a permanent deformity from happening. And then a wrist cock-up splint. This is going to provide um, support for a weak wrist to increase the use of your hand. So if you're getting weakness in your wrist and you're having difficulty holding your hand up while you do tasks, this can support your wrist while and still allow you to use your fingers. Keeping your wrist in a bent position is really, really bad for your joints and it can also cause you to get carpal tunnel. So um, we would provide something like this to help support. Oops. So, oh my. 
So back to on the shelf versus custom molded. This is something you could buy at Walgreens. You just make sure you get the right size. This is something that would be custom molded by an occupational therapist, um, depending on what your need was. If this wasn't providing you enough support, then we would need to go to something a little bit sturdier. And you're, the therapist that you see can help decide which would work for you. And then remake resting hand splints for people who are maybe having spasms at night or their fingers are drawing up at night. We've had some of our neurological patients tell us that they have pain in their hands at night. And we've figured out that if we can just kind of put them in a more neutral position at night, it decreases their hand pain. So again, this is something that you could go and purchase yourself. You could order this one on Amazon. Now it cost you 350 bucks or so, but you could order this yourself. This is something that could be would be custom molded by a therapist. If you went to a therapist and had this custom molded, and um, oftentimes the insurance would reimburse for it. Your insurance would reimburse for this as well if your doctor ordered it and you went to an orthotist and had it issued to you. Occupational therapists in general, unless they have a vendor on site, can't issue something like this to you. Okay, I'm gonna blow through some energy conservation principles. It's really, really important when you have a chronic neurological or chronic anything illness that you're really mindful of your and listen to your body. And if you're feeling fatigued, you need to listen to that fatigue. Getting overly fatigued is, is one of the worst things you can do for your, for your body. So some of the things that you might could consider um, to help get more things done throughout the day and exert less energy is avoiding rushing, planning ahead, getting all of the things that you need ahead of time so that you can just get it all done at once, meaning you gather everything you need for the task and take it to where you're gonna do the task so that you're not up and down 17 times trying to go and grab different things. Using the strongest joint available for a specific job. So I'll give you an example. If you have um, 10 bags of groceries in your car that you just gone to Kroger and you have 10 grocery bags that you need to bring in, Hooking those grocery bags on your fingers is strain, stressful on your fingers and your hands. So if you loop your, the grocery bag over your hand and hook it onto your forearm, then you're using bigger joints to carry the groceries and you relieve the stress on your hands and your fingers. Just one example. Um, sitting rather than standing, if that's possible, if you get leg fatigue, like looking up some good posture and body mechanics techniques. If you work in an office, um, it's they are legally bound to provide you with good ergonomics. So if you're sitting in a desk that's causing you discomfort, you, you know, the American Disabilities Act, you, you, ha you have the right to go to your employer and ask them to help you with that. And then another idea is to enlist friends and family to help for strenuous activities and then hiring professionals to do yard work getting up on the roof, things like that, if it's just not safe for you to do it, considering letting someone else help you with it. I think the, the highlight of this for, for, for an OT would be listen to your body and don't cause yourself excessive fatigue. If you're feeling like something you're doing is painful or bothering you, then you know that's your body telling you something and you should listen. Okay, last thing we'll talk about is stretching and exercises for CMT. So I only, I mostly focused on hands, but I did, um, I did pull a couple of pictures of some lower body things that I think can, can help just in general. So just some general knowledge things, exercise can help you it, it play a very important role in managing your CMT symptoms. It can also help you with fatigue. If you keep your muscles strong and going, then it, you're going to get less fatigued. Mm -hmm. Exercise can help with your posture. We know that postural stability helps with distal function. So meaning if you have a strong core, you're gonna have better arm and leg function. You need to make sure you're working within your limitations, however. And again, we talked about pain. If it hurts, stop. That's your body talking to you and you should listen. And then the most important areas for you to stretch typically with you have CMT are your ankles and your hands. So two ankle stretches are, I've just put on the slide here. So you don't have to do this sitting on a mat on the floor. You can do this on your bed. You can do this on the couch. You're just going to grab a band. This is a yoga band, but you can use TheraBand. You can use a belt out of your closet. You wrap around. You don't want to grab your toes. Be very mindful that you're not wrapping 
whatever whatever stretch band you're using, don't wrap it around your toes. It should be wrapped around the ball of your foot. I'm gonna put my foot up here. So this part of your foot, don't wrap your toes, that's bad. But in here is where you should wrap the strap. And then you just gently provide a stretch and hold it for, you know, you need to hold it for at least 30 to 45 seconds and just do it a few times a day is a really good habit to get into um, to get keep your ankles stretched. This is a standing stretch you can do. So she, this picture, this, the ankle that she's stretching is her back ankle. So you're gonna lean into the front ankle and let this stretch right here occur. And you then you would switch feet and um, do both back and forth several times. So now we'll move on to the hand stretches. We know that what happens with CMT is you get intrinsic weakness. So again, those are these muscles, these little tiny muscles inside your hand. Those muscles perform this action and they also do this. So in order to really get a, a good handle on making sure you don't lose range, if your muscles get weak and you start to pull into different positions, that's because your antagonist muscle is fighting against the weak muscle and winning. So as long as you can figure out a way to stretch the muscles that are weak and keep them mobility, hopefully, even though you're weak, you won't lose range in your hands and you won't have deformities. So this is an, a picture of just somebody spreading out their fingers, right? So if you're starting to, to feel like you have this weakness starting, just spreading out your hands and then pulling them back together. This is an excellent thing to keep your intrinsic muscles firing. If you can't do it actively, then you can have someone passively stretch that out for you. I always recommend the, that you do it on the tabletop so that um, you can really see your fingers moving. And it also, the, you don't have to use another part of your body to hold that arm up. And then this is, this is just what we call a claw hand, or not a claw hand, a duck beak. So making your, your hand into a duck. And that is gonna, you can do that via a stretch. This would be an exercise probably more than a stretch, but you could still stretch it if you needed to. So you would come from this position and move your hand into a duck beak. That's gonna fire all of these muscles inside your hand. And then the next one is a thumb movement or stretch. All of these can be exercises or stretches or both. If you have the ability to make the muscle activate, that's what you should do. If you don't have the ability to make that muscle activate, then you can stretch or have someone help you with stretches. So this is just keeping your thumb nice and limber. All of us should be able to take our thumbs and touch the bottom of our pinky. If you can't do that, and you should also be able to come out and make a hitchhiking L here. If you can't do that, then you should work on stretching and getting that mobility in your joints back. This is what we call a prayer stretch. So this is gonna be for your wrist, your wrist flexors. It's gonna stretch out these, these muscles down here that tend to get tight when you start to get this weakness here. So you just put your hands together like up at your face and then you use your elbows. So you're gonna pull your elbows out and pull your wrist down into a stretch. So you're not really doing anything with your hands. You're doing the motion with your elbows and your shoulders that stretches your wrist. And then the last one I think I have on here. Oh goodness, I'm trying to move myself out of the front of the picture. Okay, yeah, so again, this would be an exercise to work on those intrinsic muscles. So you start with a fist and then you move your fingers into this position so that your first joint is straight, but the second two are bent and then you open all the way. Then back into a fist, pull back to where this is straight and then straighten all the way. Okay, that's again, those are for those intrinsic muscles in your hands. And I think I'm done. Yay, 35 minutes. My email is on the slide that will be on the recording. And, and I'm happy, I told um, the, the, they're happy, to, I'm happy for them to share my email, but here's my email. And if you have more questions later, and then I will stop sharing my screen. Excellent. Okay. And I can, um, if anyone is still looking for Valerie's email, we can put it into the, the chat feature and then I can always email it out to everyone in the follow-up email. Um, 
That was so informative and your presentation, Valerie, actually covered so many of the questions that have come in. Oh, good. So, you know, the, some of the biggest concerns and uh, I have CMT1A and what's starting to affect me at 50 is, is losing all this muscle. Um, so just really amazing that people, you know, in our community are so concerned with how do you attack those daily tasks? So you've got, you know, can openers and holding pens and keyboards and, and you covered that beautifully and, and we'll share some of the links to the, the gadgetry that you were talking about. I can do a follow-up email to everyone with all these, these links so you don't have okay. to try and catch it in the chat box. Okay. So don't worry about that, everyone. I will email that out. Um, it, it will also be on this recording. Um, but then also people were talking about stretches that you should do. What are the type of stretches I should do for my hands? So great coverage there. Um, and then also, is there anything we can do to prevent the deformity? You know, if we have a parent who has CMT and we can sort of see the writing on the wall of what might be coming with our hands, how do we prevent that deformity? So um, thank you for covering that. I, I actually, I didn't realize there was something for deformity. So that was great, mm -hmm. great information. So Elizabeth, should we dive into the yeah. questions? Sure. Okay, so I made a little mental note that the first question came in at 8.04 um, from Jonathan. So I'm just gonna scroll back to get While us you're scrolling started. back, I wanted to ask Valerie, if there's anything you can do once your hands are deformed, and I'm using the word deformed as the question was posed, so I'm not trying to be insensitive, but once your hands are curled, can you can you get them back? Can you do something? Yes, yes you can. So it it requires it requires progressive uh, progressive splinting. So you would go to a therapist, have splints made, wear those splints nightly for six weeks, eight weeks, then you would go back to the same therapist and they would fabricate okay. another set of splints that puts you in a more stretched position. You sleep in those for six more weeks. So the goal would be every time we make a splint, we're stretching you a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So as long as the soft tissue is the issue. So if you have muscle tightening and tendon shortening, we can fix it. If you get a bony contracture, meaning your bones have fused together because your, your, your soft tissue has been shortened for such a long period of time, that requires surgery. But that's very, very uncommon. You would have to have, you would have, to have your fingers flexed for a really long time for your, for your bones to, to fuse. So yes, it's absolutely something that can be corrected, but it requires work. You have to be dedicated to being, to being willing to wear splints almost every day for months. It can, it can take a long time, depending on the level of your, of your contracture, or, you know, that's what we call it when you get stuck in a position as a contracture. And then after you get where you want to be, you need maintenance because right, your, your, your CMT isn't going to go away unless hopefully we find a cure very soon. Um, but we, we need to make sure that we maintain what we gain. So once you get to a position where you're stretched and you're in a good position, then you have to continue to sleep in splints to maintain what you've gained. Thank you. Yep. That makes great sense. Um, okay, another question, Valerie. Are there any tools to help with power tools? Oh. Oh, wow, well, that's, that's a, a tough, tough one. one. <laughs> yeah. Should I elaborate? Maybe, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I, I am an, an artist and uh, I'm, I'm a painter, but uh, I'm also doing sculpture and I uh, use a chainsaw. <laughs> um, and I begin um, over the past few years have become very, very weak in holding it. I also find that um, pushing, uh, let's say a power drill, having to push that lever uh, it is very difficult over time and my hand becomes very numb. And to follow up on what Elizabeth was talking about and what you were just talking about too, I, I, it's, I don't know if it's trigger finger but, um, or arthritis, but my fingers lock and I can't unlock mm -hmm. them and I have to use my other hand to release it. Um, but do you have any suggestions for adaptive equipment for okay, so something like I a think, chainsaw or? Yeah, my, my suggestion for 
the chainsaw it would be to purchase the lightest one you can find that will do what you need it to do. Um, you need something that's not heavy, not difficult to manage. So if you have a big heavy duty one, that's going to fatigue you. Um, is it is yours gas powered or does it plug it, in? It's gas powered. An electric one would be lighter, but I'm, I'm shaping a bonsai tree and um, it's yeah. 20, 40 years of juniper growing all over the place. Right. And it's very good, but it's just very, I just can't handle it like I used to. And mm -hmm. doing yard work, you had mentioned, you know, uh, getting professionals. Is there any support from MDA or CMTA for hiring someone to help with, with yard work? I have a, a very yard, big yard. I started making into a park 30 years ago. And yeah. I, just I mean, in work. Nashville, there are various associations that will help fund things like that. So you just have to do some research in the area that you live in maybe contact the representative in the area that you live. And, you know, a lot of times it's a matter of just finding someone who's willing to do it um, under your guidance and, mm -hmm. and it be just something that they, they do as a favor to you. But uh, again, I, I think once you get into using really heavy power tools, that's just something that there's not a great solution for, unfortunately. And the other thing I would, I would just gently say is the more you push yourself to use the tools that cause you that, that, that difficulty, it's, it, you're just doing yourself more harm than good. So trying to figure out better solutions, um, to save your health, you know, figuring out, a, a, even if it's painful to give it up, it, it, you know, your health is more important. You're so right. Also, thank you so much for the presentation. Sure. It was wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, yeah, power tools. I never even thought of them. I mean, I can't even imagine using power tools myself. I'll probably chop my arm off. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Valerie, you know, so we talked about stretching. How about strengthening? Can you strengthen those hand muscles? Is there anything to do about strengthening? The intrinsic no. muscles or just keeping them stretched out unfortunately once your cmt is affected your you know it's that neurological um suppression and that that's not something that once that signal is not going there anymore we can't make the signal come back so it, you know, it's just kind of dealing with how your, how your disease progresses and understanding that it's just the nature of, of CMT and okay. trying to maintain what you have and making sure that you're not doing anything to exacerbate your symptoms or to make it worse. But no, unfortunately, I think once the, once those pathways aren't connected anymore, they're not connected anymore. Okay. Thanks. Laurel, what do you got? I am looking through and something that's making my heart so happy is that everyone's sharing with each other um, great solutions, you know, because being part of the patient community, you've exper experimented with so many different things. Um, so I'm looking for a question. Um, someone is asking about the days. Um, that, that really got a lot of conversation flowing, that, that got a uh, lot of the day question. It's it yes. good to Hello. mention that. Um, okay, people are asking where to find the grippers. I think those were the things on the pencils and the forks. Oh, Amazon. Amazon. And what, do you, what are they called? If you search um, adaptive grips, you will find hundreds. The foam tubing is the, the round foam tubing that I had on the slide that comes in like three different colors and three different sizes. You could search specific to, you could search specifically foam tubing. But if you just mm -hmm. put in a search for adaptive grips, there's hundreds. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, one thing, and I'm, uh, let me know if you covered this, um, Valerie, because I was, I was moving around a little bit during the Zoom. Um, what about hand tremors? Is what supports, is there anything that A, can stop hand tremors? Anything that from the occupational therapist standpoint that we should be doing for hand tremors? Tremors are hard. Um, it's one of the hardest things that we unfortunately see and have to deal with. 
So I, I need to give a little like disclaimer. I, I, until I see you and touch you and feel you and figure out what's causing your tremor, I can't make really good recommendations. But what I can tell you is one of the things that I have found super beneficial with my patients who have tremors for anything. I have a, a patient right now, he has an anoxic brain injury and he has a tremor from his brain injury. But we have found that if you have weakness in your wrist and when you're trying to use your hand and it's tremoring and your wrist is, is curling like this, if you see that that's happening, one of those resting hand splints to stabilize your wrist, to hold your wrist still, can decrease your tremor. It's not a perfect fix, but we've seen it be very effective for some of our patients. So, you know, you can go to Walgreens and buy one of those splints for $10 and give it a try. In the past, they've done a lot of recommend, recommending um, like weighted stuff. Don't do that. Um, one, oh. because you don't want anything weighted in your hands when you have CMT, that's just don't do it. Um, but sometimes just increasing the size of what you're holding can help. Um, but you know, the other thing is, is core stability. All of the research has shown us in the last few years that if you can stabilize your proximal joints, you're gonna get better, better control at your distal ends. So I'm gonna just move my camera. Maybe I can put it in a better position. So, oh, sorry. So if you're like, you can get your elbow on the table and stabilize your elbow on the table, that can do a lot for your hand function. So. You know, you're always taught not to eat with your elbows on the table. Well, if you're tremoring, you, if you put your elbow on the table, you might get better control of your hand. So just put your elbow on the table. If you can sit at the sink and put your elbows on the sink while you brush your teeth, while you floss, while you shave, you might see that it makes a, a big difference. Um, one of the things that I didn't put on my slides was a, well, um, the second slide with the plastic things that were around the hand, I don't know if you guys remember those. So you mm -hmm. can put, you can put a razor in that, you can put a toothbrush in that. So if your fingers are the problem and your fingers are trembling, trembling or tumbling, if you put something on your hand, then you can use this motion to do what you need to do. And it might eliminate the tremor in your hand. Oh, that's huh. fascinating. Yep. And, and you know, just... May I, bring up, may I bring up another issue? Sure. Thank you. Uh, you know, I noticed um, I've had some, um, oh, um, forms uh, uh, created around my hands so I could straighten out my fingers at night. I found out they're very uncomfortable and they're hard to get on. So what I started to do was to sleep with my hands reversed in the bed to stretch the fingers out. When I get up in the morning, they're great. So, you know, this is like five or six hours or seven hours or eight hours a night. However, I wonder, is there something simple you can use during the day that you could slide your fingers into to keep them straight. Now I'm not talking about a cast. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about something like a glove. Mm -hmm. um, they do make lots of different types of adaptive gloves. I'm not sure they make, to my knowledge, I'm not sure they make anything that you can put on your hand that's gonna keep your fingers straight. Most of the gloves are designed to provide like um, a good texture in your palm so you can grip things better or they're designed to like give you warmth in your hands if you get cold hands. I don't know of anything that they make gloves that pull your hands closed, <laughs> but I don't know that they make a glove that will, that will keep your hand open. Well, you know, I, and I understand that. I guess what I'm saying is, but in the evening, if I reverse my hands and sleep on my knuckles, I wake up in the morning, they're perfectly straight. Mm -hmm. If you're having finger, your fingers are curling at night, they may, you can make, you can get finger splints that keep your fingers open. Um, they make ovulate splints, um, 
figure eight splints. They're, they're various types of, of little, and those just slide onto your finger and will keep your finger straight. No, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, and I understand that, but you know, I'm talking about, and forgive me if I <laughs> hurt anyone by saying this, but I mean, a, a claw hand is what we call it. A, a claw hand, is that what claw you're saying? Hand, because, so this? Right. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. You, you would have to get the little finger splints. But, but, but you don't need that if there's a glove Right, that's true. right. So there's a lot of solutions out there, a lot of, but you sleep on your hand, you found a solution for you and that's really good information, right? And then we'll look for that glove. You know, and a lot of things that um, I'm coming through with these uh, questions is about credit cards. People are having, you know, there's some really good information in the chat, Laurel, that we'll have to copy and paste and give to everyone. But what do you tell people, you know, they have the tap things. I have no idea how that works. I've tried tapping and I'm still outside of the gas station, like waiting for it. To, so I put it in and then you lose your credit card and then they leave a little slit to try to get that credit card back out. What do you do? Oh, my. So... Yeah, yeah. By the way, you're exactly right. To put a uh, quarter into a uh, parking meter, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah. So along those lines, uh, what do you do with those little little things? Yeah, I would try to see if I could come up with a device that they can just pinch it and. So some it people out. are talking about needle nose pliers. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a great solution. Um, or hemostats, or you know something like that, so that you can you can get a hold of it without having to get your fingers into that little tiny slot. He missed right. that. Can I yeah. ask a whole, a whole different question about, about pain? Okay. Can these exercises address pain in the hands or in other places? Well, it depends on what's causing your pain. And if, um, if it's neurological pain, then that's very difficult to manage without medication. Um, we do teach people about mindfulness and meditation and making sure that you're in a good mental state and all those kinds of things when you have neurological pain, but nerve pain is very hard to manage, but stretching, keeping um, a good nutrition, making sure that you're staying as active as you can be, all of those things can help with your pain. But unfortunately, if it's neurological pain, that's something that you really should have a very in-depth conversation with your neurologist about and try to figure out the medical management. Yeah. So I know you have to be a doctor to be able to prescribe the right medications, but can you just mention a few that you know for neuro neurological pain? Well, the most common one is neurotin or gabapentin. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and there are a couple others, but I think that I'd say 99% of the people who have neurological pain are on gabapentin or neuron. And we have a list at the CMTA website, so you can always go to that and say pain medications. Dr. Shearer wrote um, an article about that. It's quite a few there. Right. Thank you, Jeff. Laurel, what other questions do we have? Because we're coming to the end of the hour, and yes. I want to get to see if people are using the chat. Absolutely. On. So one common theme that has come up repeatedly, Valerie, is numbness. Numbness in the hands when they sleep, numbness in the hands when mm. they type for too long or they write for too long. So what are the best strategies for addressing numbness? So I, my best guess is the numbness is coming from the position of your wrist. So all of the nerves uh -huh. that go into your hand that provide sensation into your hand run through your wrist. So all of them run right through here. So if you're having numbness in your hands, it's almost assuredly because you're getting some kind of pressure right here. You do have a couple that come up this way, but I would guess that most of you are talking about numbness on the bottom, like on your fingertips here, not back here. So I would say this is a positional thing. So if you're typing and you're holding your hands like this for too long, yes, your fingers are going to go numb. If you're sleeping like this, your fingers are going to go numb. So if you tend to sleep in a position like this, that's when we would recommend that you think about sleeping in some kind of positioning device to keep your wrist from bending like that. If it's, a, if it's an ergonomical issue when you're typing, 
you should think about trying to get something to support your forearms while you're typing so that you're not typing like this. Um, those are, you know, really fast solutions, but I would say that's 99% of the time, if your fingers are going numb, it's coming from some kind of compression in your wrist. Okay. And Laura, do you have another one? Well, I'm just combing through them and um, it's a lot of people sharing excellent information. And uh, Valerie, is it okay for you to send your PowerPoint presentation to me and I can share that with everybody? Sure, yeah. Afterwards, okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, but a lot of great tips. And so what we will do is um, we will go through the chat because we get a print out of the chat and, and make sure that the, the big questions, those common themes were answered. Um, and then I can also, I'm happy to collect some of those um, tidbits of information where people shared advice and guidance. And then I can send that around to everyone who registered to be part of this meeting, if that sounds good. Um, I mentioned something, Laurel, you know yes, what please. I saw in Valerie, you didn't mention it, but I went to a friend's house and that person had Alexa. It was like, Alexa, turn off the lights. Alexa, turn on the TV. Alexa, music. I'm, and I'm like, geez, he's lazy. But then I was thinking about it. <laughs> and I think what a great tool for somebody with CMT, right? Using your voice. So there's a lot of options opening up. Right for yeah. people that audio technologies, it. yeah, audio technology is going to change the world. It is. I can tell you, I have a quadriplegic quadriplegic patients who can now spend hours alone because they can they can give commands to their house with their voice. So, yeah, it, it's a definitely a great tool if you have any kind of technical savvy anything in your in. If you're not technical savvy, find somebody in your family who is who can hook up an Alexa for you. It's magic. I and also, we just bought fire too. alarm, fire smoke detectors mm -hmm. that I just go, hey, you know, just like, bee, 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 you know, I just go, go, stand down, you know, like, stop, <laughs> shut up. And it stops. And, and I'm like, instead of getting up there, there, trying to fidget, trying to get the batteries out, it's a, it's miraculous, actually. Laurel, go ahead. Sorry, just had it. Um, Kathy wanted to make a comment. Kathy, go ahead real fast. Using Alexa or something like that is also really good if you have to reach somebody at another point in the house for, for an emergency. I use it all oh. the time if I have to reach my husband upstairs. Mm -hmm. So oh, Kathy, I, also, I live alone and I have one in my bathroom and one in another part of my house in the event that I were to fall and I couldn't get to a phone, I could, um, I could ask it to call for help. That's an excellent oh, point. It's a great emergency crisis. Okay, good. Good, good, Can good. Can I ask well, one question? Uh, Can I ask one question? It's difficult for me to type. Okay. Okay. You can use Alexa yeah. also as a- I'm calling. Uh, uh, I'm, go calling ahead, I'm Rivan calling from India. So uh -huh. I, w uh, I, I usually do, uh, I've taken up a new job and I, I'm on laptop working from home all the time. So uh, the assistive tools for typing, I have tried many, but specifically for mouse, what uh, solutions oh. can be taken? For the mouse. Okay. Mouse. Yeah, there are solutions for the mouse. I would love it if you could um, just email me. It, you know, I, I would, I have, definitely some things I can help you with, but I don't really have time. So um, I'm 100% happy to help you and send you some tools for that. If you just get my email address and send me an email, okay? And yeah. also the, the first slide which you mentioned that we used to grip our uh, mid, uh, the thumb uh -huh. to support the thumb. Can that be used with a mouse as well? And it will help to stabilize my movements? Yes. When I try to use the mouse? Yeah. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Thank you. Thanks for one. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you, question, thank you. Thank you so you. much for great. being Wasn't here. Laurel, oh my gosh. You, Valerie, on. Oh, hello. It was thank an amazing you. presentation with wonderful information. Can we I thank everyone for being thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. Please thank ask you. a question. Um, thank you. Um, you can Hi. hear me? 
Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, I don't know if Valerie can stay, but um, okay. Leah can take yeah, your I question. Just, um, I put I put it to Laurel, I think. Uh -huh. At 656, I wrote a message to you uh -huh. and um, that my family is in need of being diagnosed. Uh, do you see it? Um, what I wrote? Did you did you send me an email? No, a chat. Oh, OK, I'll look you know, in the Laurel, chat. I think we'll have to look at that chat and then maybe have them email Valerie or you. I think that yeah. would probably be the best can, at that point. Can somebody and, get back to me? Yes, yes. Do yes, I Leah, I can get back. This is Leah, this is Laurel, and I can get back to you. But we're going to wrap now, and I'll go through the chat, everybody. And you should all have my email if you have any uh, follow-up questions, and I will be in touch. Thanks, Thank everyone. You, everybody. Thank Thanks, you, Valerie. Thank you. Great. Thank Thanks, you, Elizabeth. Laurel. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Great meeting. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Very good. Thank, Thank you. It was Thank very you. good, Valerie. Thank you. Nice job. Very helpful. Thanks. Bye-bye.